Welcome everyone to reading series number one, Unhappy Campers, part two. Confused, the young doe without a mother nearby to guide her is frantic, running out of land. People run after them, trying to stop the dogs. After paying their entrance fee, cars drive down the hill to the picnic area along the beach, cutting off the doe's escape into the woods. As we stand at the beach's edge, we see that the deer is trapped by cars, people, sounds, and tents, all while being chased by the dogs. Dawn and I look at each other, unsure what to do. So we start to run, following the pursuit like others. Across the small cove at the end of the parking lot is a hill with rocks and trees, bushes and roots. Just below the hill and to the side of the parking lot is a dock with boats moving in and out, motors blaring, music playing. The young kind ranger who helped us last night with a full campground steps out of the fee booth to check out the commotion. She obviously heard the shouting and car horns below. Shielding her eyes from the sun, she slowly walks down the hill, trying to figure out what she's seen. Her expression changes and she starts jogging at a fast clip with keys and other items swaying from her belt. She abandons a white Toyota sedan and balding man at the gate looking for entrance. Dawn squeezes my hand as the deer turns closer to the water while more people crowd and scare her. Children splash and shout. The doe is running out of room and land, running out of time. Dawn and I stop about 20 yards away, helpless. Attempting to flee the beach toward campers and onlookers, she becomes even more scared, moving closer to the water once more. Clearly, she isn't sure where to go as the noise and movement come toward her like a wall. The young doe crooks her neck up, seeing the open hillside like a sanctuary across the small cove. The dogs keep barking, chasing, and nipping at her hindquarters. There must be eight of them unrelenting in their attack. Signs are po posted all over the beach. Dogs must remain leashed at all times. The deer splashes into the shallows, coming out further down the beach, where several more unleashed dogs howl and chase, joining in the frenzy. Owners shout for their animals to return. Horrified, Dawn and I watch along with everyone else. Dogs, big and small, growl, yap, and nip in their pack-like frenzy, stalking her. Their teeth showing as they tap into primal instincts embedded deeper in their psyches than domestication and milk bone dog biscuits. The deer moves left to right, then in a panic back into the shallows again, splashing and bounding. This time she paddles over to the boat area, getting closer to that hillside and escape but there's no way she can clear those docks and boats. There's no way she can escape. The lead dog swims after her while others follow suit. The deer has terror in her eyes. The ranger asks people to move back as she steps into the water with her shit kicker boots, then jogs along the beach to the docks. The lead dog's owner attempts to get his dog back onto the beach and under control. Sir, animals are always to be leashed. The stout ranger shouts at him as she runs past. Dawn and I push past onlookers, drawn in by the chase. I know, I know, I'm sorry, he shouts back at her. Lucy treats, Lucy treats. He runs along the beach, shouting in vain with his hand held low. Lucy treats. Eventually, after several more attempts, he draws Lucy out of the water with her chew toy and an easy biscuit. The other dogs take that as a cue to listen to the row of masters yelling at them from the beach as the doe moves dangerously closer to the boats. Everyone is thinking the problem is now over as the dogs retreat, but their constant barking pushes the deer to swim still closer to the docks. The ranger appears unsure what to do as she looks around and up the hillside. Folks, if we could just lure her over to the boat launch, she says, that should do it. She runs along the shallows. It sounds like a fair solution. Hopefully the deer can make it to the boat launch so all of us can selfishly get back to the day and much needed sun and swimming before going back to work on Tuesday. Tomorrow will be an all day ride on the interstate with traffic and of every other vacation. Not fun on a motorcycle, not fun anytime. The ranger shouts, stop. 
and a few trucks that are hauling boats over to the launch. Along the dock, boat motors rumble and groan. A few of the boaters see the deer coming, but some in larger boats with engines running do not. We're all shouting, but too many boats and are entering and ex exiting the docks. We yell some more and wave while the dogs continue barking. People around us begin arguing about the deer's fate and why the dogs are off their leashes when they aren't supposed to be. This should never have happened, someone proclaims, while another person concurs, many things shouldn't. Women yell at one another, men too. People without dogs are angry. Some with dogs on leashes shout. I guess the rules don't apply to you. The mob turns ugly. An innocent young deer has stirred up this whole park and she may be sacrificed for it and our choices if no one can get her to change course and move over to the boat launch. A driver of a large truck throttles his engine, causing the animal to dart closer to the sailboats, lines and floating markers away from the boat launch. Her eyes are bulging out of her head. She's terrified, Dawn says, squeezing my hand. Sweat drips from us both. The day is hot, the sun unrelenting. Trying to flee, the doe swims closer to the dock and hillside, then stops, paddling furiously, frantic, but she's not moving. More boaters become aware of the situation are trying to avoid her, but they're also trying to not, also trying not to crash into each other on the dock. The boat captains all shout at each other. Many of them are probably Weekend warriors without a lot of emergency boating skills. Start your engines, drink some beers, go. The ranger shouts, she must have gotten stuck on the lines. She runs faster to the docks, knowing the situation has turned dire. Wake from the boats are slowly drowning the innocent young deer as she flails about. Her head goes under every few seconds from the weight. Kicking with hind and front legs, she isn't moving forward. Her head goes under again, probably inhaled some water and comes up choking. The kicking slows soon after. She's listening a little. The dogs keep barking as we all move closer to watch, still unsure what to do. There is nothing to do, nothing any of us can do except pray. A few women cover their children's eyes. The boaters are fully aware of the deer now, shutting off their engines, using poles and paddles, but there are too many voices, and still she's stuck. One boater tries to get close enough and pokes at her, trying to push her off whatever she's stuck on, but instead she goes under for a long, a long period. Stop it! Dawn shouts next to me in so much pain herself. Overwhelmed and exhausted, the deer is tiring and beginning to go under after paddling so intensely. She's trapped and dying. Someone cut the ropes! A woman behind us desperately shouts. A man yells back, she's too panicked and won't allow it. She'll kick you to death before anyone can help, even underwater. One thin bicyclist a few feet down says sarcastically, now this is the world in a nutshell. Oh, the humans. How amazing we are. He looks sideways at the small woman he's riding with and concludes, we should have gone to your parents instead. She nods, she nods, wiping her eyes as they turn and pedal out of the campground parking lot. A man behind us muses, it is what it is. Things suffer. A woman nearby responds angrily, what a cop out. They suffer because of us. How many dead animals do you see on the sides of the roads? Well, they didn't kill themselves. Another man says matter-of-factly, if the ranger can't save her, she should shoot her instead of letting Bambi drown, traumatizing the children. It's the only civilized thing to do. Civilized? You mean barbaric? Don't you think shooting her will also traumatize the children? I know it'll traumatize me. On the dock, the ranger, unsure what to do, calls someone on her walkie-talkie. She yells to a couple of boaters to pull out from the dock. The deer paddles frantically once more and goes under for a longer period, now leaning when she comes back up, eyes glossed over. The wake of shifting boats rise and fall around her. 
the ranger who's probably only here for summer months walks closer to the end of the dock and waves away any remaining boaters to clear the area. She's crying, wiping her face with a bandana. Not trying to lasso the deer with a flotation ring, she can't reach her. She pauses to stare at the onlookers, frantic dogs and boaters. Unholstering her weapon, she squats on the dock. Wiping her face again, she shakes her head, gets back up and reholsters her gun. Pacing for a moment, she scans the boats and everyone on the beach who's out for the last holiday of the season. Everyone watches her. Placing the walkie-talkie to her ear so she can hear the command clearly, she stops pacing and nods, takes a deep breath, unholsters again, unholsters her gun again, spreads her leg to shoulder width and bends her knees, placing both hands on the pistol. Dawn and I are paralyzed, holding our breath, afraid she's going to shoot. The campground is still. Dawn looks at me with blue, pleading eyes and said, I'm going to be sick. Her voice is trembling. That little black girl stands next to me with her mother. No kid should see this. She squeezes her stuffed animal and shouts, Stop it, please. You're going to hurt her. She's just scared. I'm scared too. Her mother places her arm around her and her eyes meet. When I hear stop from this booming voice walking onto the beach, a slender man steps out from the crowd. It's the meditation guy walking with slow, disciplined strides, broad shoulders, brown eyes, wearing her t-shirt that says, my other car on my feet. This is a house of God. His voice echoes across the cove and off the hillside. His arms raised to shoulder height. His fingertips point up with palms out. Stop this madness. This is a house of peace. He looks around making eye contact as if staring into each one of us with his deep thoughtful eyes. We can find a different way. We owe it to the deer and our children. We must be better than our whims and impulses. His kids run out and surround him with hugs. His arms drop to hug them in return. Time seems to slow down with a collective pause as we all look around, a collective sigh of relief. A boater stands next to a woman and cups his mouth. We have scuba gear. We can get under there and free her. The boatman and beachman look over at the ranger who holsters her gun. She nods at them, wiping her eyes. A quiet falls over the scene as the man and woman boaters get on their gear and drop off the rear of the boat, disappearing into the cold, dark waters. A minute later, the deer seems to almost spring toward the shore. It's safe as all the dogs are leashed. A wide, unspoken path forms between beach dwellers who let her through. She tears past the group up the hillside to safety, pauses looking back and kicks and runs past rocks and spruce trees out of sight. The little girl next to us says, she's gonna be okay, mama. It was a sign, baby, her mother says, pulling her tight. We stand for another few moments pondering that little deer and what could have been her fate. Come on, Dawn says, let's swim. I need to wash this off me. We lay our towels down on the beach, but we don't move to the water. My hands are sweating. She's shaking. We lay down, first allowing the earth and sun to caress us. A few minutes pass, then we step into the lake, diving into, into its exhilarating cold waters. That night, the campground is quiet with so many around. No radios play that I can hear, no televisions. Even the dogs seem subdued, perhaps exhausted from today's chase. We lay quietly in the tent holding hands. Without looking at me, Dawn says, it feels like some innocent part of me would have been shot too. I was scared for the deer, but I was also scared for myself. She rolls over and closes her eyes, crying. I stroke her hair until I fade. The next morning, we pack up the tent, throwing our gear upon the motorcycle and hop on. Dawn squeezes me as we throttle up the sandy campground road. I am reminded that we often don't want to look at ourselves or the world we live in. That's why we come out here. Yet at the same time, we can't turn our backs. 
on the ride out as we slowly glide along with traffic, I reckon it was a house of God indeed. It easily could have been a house of the devil. Feeling more hopeful as we head home to our jobs, bills, and the world. My job doesn't weigh on me the way it usually does. Instead, I'm holding on to that innocence for as long as I can. That is the end of Unhappy Campers. I will continue the reading series in the next few days. Thanks to everyone for listening. Have a good night.